Hi Calvary Teachers! Today I just wanted to go through some of the apps and programs that are free at the moment that might be able to assist you in um, engaging the kids in doing some reading online. So I'm hoping that these programs will be helpful to you. The first one I want to show you is Epic. It's completely free. Uh, you do have to sign your class up for it, but as soon as they have their class codes, students can sign in whenever they want. They can look for books. There are books that will read out loud to them, books they can read themselves, and this actually times them as well. And you can even choose books that will have a questionnaire at the end, or you can put questionnaires at the end of them to assess their comprehension. So I've logged in. I won't show you how to set it up because I don't want to waste your time with that. I just want to show you how you can use it. Um, maybe we're doing, I'll, I'll talk about Science Week. So Science Week we're doing books that are about ocean and ocean conservation. So I could look up ocean and I now am going to get a whole bunch of books. There are some in Spanish as well about the ocean. You have options, so this is showing you everything, so you can look for just books. There's a book there. All right. You can read this with the kids. If there's any words they don't know the meaning of, they can click on it. There you go. It says the meaning of it. And they can flick and turn through the book. And read the book as they go. As the teacher, you can assign this book to the students. So you could actually give it to them and then on the student's side they'll actually get a notification saying their teacher has assigned a book for them. So this is one example of a book. There are also videos. There's apparently no videos on ocean. Uh, there are read to me books. This might be good for your lower reading levels because what these books do is actually read out loud. So I'll show you. Orca Calves by Ruth Owen. So as you can see, it highlights at the same time. Meet an orca calf out in the ocean. Right. Three point. So I'll stop that because you've got the point of that one. There are also audio books. And there will be collections where other teachers have made maybe collections of books about the ocean and things like that that you might be able to use as well. Um, something else I like that you can do is that you can uh, change the reading level. So you don't have to use Lexile either. Um, there's other leveling systems. So depending, like Fontas and Pinnell, uh, Lexile, um, I'm not too sure exactly what you guys are using here. Hopefully it's there. Um, I'm used to Fontas and Pinnell. And let's pretend that I'm teaching grade two, okay, in first half of the year, and by the end of the year, you to L, I think it is. All right, so now I'm seeing books that have Fontas and Pinnell level I to L books about the ocean, and these are different collections other teachers have made. So this is an example of how you can use Epic. Uh, from the teacher console, you can actually keep track of all of your kids. You can see how they are going, how much reading they're doing, etc. Um, if you would like to learn more about Epic, please let me know and I'll make a much more in-depth video for you. The next program that I want to show you is called Vocabulary Spelling City. Now, this program is free but in its free version it's quite limited. Um, you can pay for it. It is, I think I was paying about $70 for a year subscription um, for 30 students. And that I paid happily because this program is brilliant. <clears throat> this one's good for spelling and vocabulary, quite obviously. So I would put my own lists of spelling words in there and students could then play games to practice those words and then be tested on those words. They can, you can also test their vocabulary on those words as well, which I thought was fantastic. So here's an example of a list of AI words that I had assigned to a class. They can play games with these words to practice them. So you can also test me. You as a teacher will get the results of those. And here is a bunch of different games that the kids can play. The handwriting is more one that you'd be printing out so they can practice their handwriting for those games for those words, but the rest of them can be played on the computer. So this is just a way that you would be able to maybe do sight words for your younger students 
or for your older students, you can do practice with spelling. So there's, as you can see, there's word searches, um, audio word match, missing letter. The thing I really like about this program is that when it comes to the spelling test, it's self-paced. So that student who didn't quite hear the word can listen to the word again. And they can take their time to write the spelling of it. So this is an example of spelling test. Um, okay, let's go. Get ready for the test. Don't peek at your list. Begin. Snail. The slow-moving snail left a trail of slime. Now, what you can also do is choose an Australian accent for this, which I think is very cool. So, we know the word was snail. If I miss the word, I can click on word. Snail. Say it again. Click on sentence. The slow-moving snail left a trail of slime. Okay, and then I can click on next. Aim. Aim for the target with your baseball. Okay, so this is how that program works. Um, snail. The slow-moving snail left a trail of slime. And that is the spelling city. So I've shown you so far a reading one. This is one specifically for spelling and vocabulary. And the final one I want to show you is Prodigy. This game is completely free. I've got a couple of the kids have already started playing it, but feel free to start them off again. I personally think this game is absolutely amazing. Okay, so I'm showing you the teacher console side of things first. I've got a couple of different classes. So this is my one from last year. You can keep a track of the use, how many students are using it, how often they're using it. Uh, what I really like about this program is that it actually starts off with a placement test. So all the kids will do a test first, and then from there, they will partake in um, whatever level of maths they are up to. You as the teacher can restrict the maths that they're doing to a particular topic. So if you're doing addition, you can ensure that all the questions that they get will be about addition. That's just an example. This game plays like Pokemon. So the students are a little character, they're running around a map, they're fighting bad monsters and they're trying to complete tasks. Every time they fight a bad monster, they have to answer math questions to be able to attack them. I have not found a kid who doesn't love this game. So this is just another way for them to do maths. Uh, one of the brilliant parts of it as well is that when they're answering a question, there are um, help help things along the way. So I'll show you what the gameplay looks like for the kids so you'll see why they love it so much. So this is what the game looks like from a student perspective. So I've got my character here, and I've got my tasks that I need to do, people I need to talk to, treasure chests you can open. Let's see what happens. Okay, so you get sucked into this, this battle you need to take part in. You've got your different attacks. Okay, and now your question comes up. If you have difficulty reading it, or your child has difficulty reading it, they can click on play, and it will say the question out loud. You need to sell 492 cupcakes for a fundraiser. You're sold 131 on Monday, 104 on Tuesday, and 92 on Thursday. How many more do you need to sell? Okay, so it's read it out loud for you. And there's green uh, light bulbs that can help you. And if you click on these, you'll get a, t a hint. When you've sold cupcakes, you should add. Okay. How many more do you need? Okay. You'll need to subtract to know how many more you need to sell. All right, so it's giving you a couple of hints. Now on the side, there's pencils so they can draw. They also have manipulatives like counters base 10 blocks and fractions that they can all use to help them with these. As you get into the higher level sort of things, they can bring out a calculator, but I think that's only for if you're doing high school level stuff. Um, if you do have a child who's working at that level, this will automatically tailor and 
make the questions harder. And again, if a child is struggling, this will automatically tailor and make the questions easier. So I'll figure out my answer and I'll put my answer in. Use these so you can always write on the page. Obviously, you're encouraging the students not to uh, simply use a calculator. Okay, so once I've figured out my answer and I've put it in there, I will click on Cast Spell. Now, when you do get the question wrong, you'll usually get a second chance to answer it. If you get it wrong again, it will explain to you. So, again, this is simply a fun, engaging way to get the kids doing some of their maths work. Um, I actually learned some things from it when I was playing with it as well. So, just another program you might be able to use with your kids. So, I hope that that was beneficial. I hope that you enjoyed that and maybe you can use some of those programs uh, in what you're doing with your kids. Thanks, guys.